What's up everyone? Welcome back to the Durbin Compound. Uh, today I'm doing a little oil change on the Merc. Um, she just rolled 50,000 miles, so I'm going to change my oil. Um, this is the fifth oil change, um, or the fourth oil change actually. Uh, so I do all my oil changes myself. Um, I no longer trust the dealership, or the dealership as some of them called. Um, I've had a lot of bad experiences, so uh, I'll walk you through those, trust me. Um, tell you exactly what happened at the dealership and why I don't go back, um, why I'm fed up with them, because uh, I care about my car more than, uh, more than a lot of stuff in my life, so when they dick me over and screw up my car, um, it's, uh, it takes everything I have to, uh, to not go in there and raise hell about it. So let's uh, change of oil, we'll talk a little bit, a little bit of discussion. Um, I've already taken off the under uh, the uh, protective panel on the bottom. Um, the reason why I'm not doing this on the lift today is because one, I don't want to move the Corvette out of the way and the snow is thawing. And uh, two, I haven't heated the shop recently. And three, um, I don't have the jack pads for the car, so I don't want to put it on the lift stands and, and uh, balance it up on the little rubber stops that are underneath this. So I still have to buy the jack pads for this car. Um, so I can put it on the lift, but let's go ahead and start this uh, this oil change. Come on, girl. So I use this under hood light. Um, this under hood light is by AT or ATD Tools. Um, it comes with a I think it's a 48 inch bulb in there. Um, it's a pretty pretty good unit to have. Uh, lights everything up very nicely. So, I do like having it around. So I'll take off my intake here. All right, so let's set this out of the way. So one of the first reasons why um, I don't take my car to the dealership anymore is because, uh, one, it's expensive. Like, it's crazy expensive to have anything done at the dealership. Um, I took this car in for its uh, service B inspection at 20,000 miles and pretty much got uh, uh, it was my first experience I was like let's give it a shot see what they do see if they're truly um, as awesome as they say they are um, I know there's probably Mercedes dealerships out there that um, are above reproach but the one I bought this car from is not it's uh, completely um, just BS um, how poorly they treated my car um, came back with scratches on it stuff all over it uh, I purposely tell them not to wash the car because I don't want the, the detailing kid that's there uh, scratching up my paint with all the love marks and the microfiber. Um, when they delivered the car, I told him to stop touching it because he kept rubbing uh, scratches into it as I was standing there buying the car. So, uh, one of those things. But uh, the Service B, they told me my, uh, I, they went around the car, I let them do their thing. Um, it cost $425 for a Service B. Uh, they did. They did an oil change. They, I think, they did filters at that time. Um, just a couple odds and ends things. Uh, they even wanted to rotate my tires, and that's funny because this car has a staggered wheel set that it has wider tires in the back than it does the front, so you can't rotate them. So it's funny that they they wanted to charge me for a tire rotation, but yet I have a staggered wheel set. So uh, they're just bad all around. All right, so let's pop this uh, let's pop this filter loose here. All right, so all of these uh, German vehicles, whether it's a VW, Audi, um, Mercedes, they all have basically a uh, a jar that the the paper filter sits in, or a fleece filter sits in and then they have a uh, plastic top with an o-ring on it so right now i'm taking the plastic top off of the uh, oil filter so at the bottom of all of these uh, everything uh let's see the bottom of the actual bowl that the filter fits in has a little stop plug in it what it does is once you pull the filter out, it'll drain the bowl for the most part, but um, some of them don't. Like I had a uh, 1985 turbo diesel 300B. 
Mercedes and the filter bowl uh, never never uh, drained all the fluid out. So it was like you you had to have like this big it was a huge filter like this and you'd have to put a pan underneath the side of it. It was back here on the on the right side of the engine. You'd have to put a big pan back there and then just plop it out. It was just full of oil all dripping. So I even rigged up a little spot where I hung it off of the hood until it drained most of the oil off of it before I tried to take it out over the car. So it was a little it was a little nasty to do that. So since I've already taken off the take, ah, of course somebody calls during the middle of this. So uh, oh Kaufman, let's see what he wants. What's up, buddy? Nothing changing the oil on my Mercedes. All right, I want to go shoot some guns. All right, so um, where was I? So since the oil pan or the uh, since the cover's off, I'm gonna go ahead and take the oil drain plug out here. Little 13 millimeter. Let's go ahead and knock this loose. So the very first time that I took this, I took this drain plug out. This drain plug is like uh, every bit of three quarters of an inch long. I took this bad boy out and just kept turning and turning and turning and turning. And uh, it finally came loose and it didn't give you any inclination that it was about to spray the oil everywhere, but it shot out so far towards the passenger, we or the driver wheel, that I slid the pan over and then forgot that I'd slid it past where it was gonna drip when it was straight up and down. So it was all over the ground and I was like, well, uh, I'm not gonna do that again. So let's clean up this drain plug here and uh, let's take the rest of this filter out. So, all right, get back to the dealership that I was talking about earlier. So the dealership, um, okay, I did my service B inspection and not even a week later, I think it was two days later, I had a check engine light for a charcoal filter come on. So I'm like, great, they just inspected this thing. They just ran diagnostics on it with the computer and now I've got a check engine light for this charcoal filter. So I drag it back to the dealership, which is an hour away. And so they get it in and, and uh, start checking it out. And they replaced the, they had it for a couple days. They replaced the charcoal filter. They had to remove the, remove the driver's side or passenger side rear wheel. I think it was passenger side. So they replaced this bad boy and got it all taken care of, blah, 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 blah. And uh, so I come home and I have a big thing about trusting people. So um, I'll trust you if I, if I verified you a couple times, but uh, I grew up in the aviation world, so we don't trust anybody. We double verify everything. Everything gets double checked. Um, and me being a quality assurance representative for a couple years um, in the airfield or in the aviation wing, in the military, of course, uh, we don't play around. So we're going to verify absolutely everything that happened. So I took off, I went to take off the rear wheel and turns out that they had over torqued my lug nuts, basically put it on with an impact gun. And these are, uh, the AMG wheels are aluminum alloy. So easily you could, uh, you could, uh, you know, gall the, the seats that the lug nuts sit in because they're steel on aluminum. So they could basically deform my wheels with what they did. And I think I wrote it down actually. Um, I am really anal about leaving a detailed record for all of my maintenance. If we can get this thing to sit So there. coming up in the world of military aviation, um, every single thing was uh, written down in a pass down so that as soon as you were done working on something or you changed over to another shift, you uh, basically had a pass down that covered your butt for the next guys coming in and they knew exactly where you left off. So let's see here. Um, I record all of my torques. I record all of my quality assurance stuff. Um, all right, check engine light for charcoal tank heater, tire charcoal system canister for EVAP emission system replaced. 
Um, so here, yes, wheels over torqued to 268 Newton meters. And they're supposed to be torqued to 130. So they doubled the torque on my, on my lug nuts. So basically, um, I don't know the exact uh, parameters on the, on the wheel fasteners, but technically at 260 Newton meters and plus, uh, that's, uh, that's easily uh, right at the yield of your fastener. So basically just trashed those lug nuts um, and those wheel studs if you wanted to get technical with it. So I went ahead and replaced the wheel fasteners uh, with uh, genuine Mercedes parts. Uh, and uh, it looked like the studs were fine. Uh, I probably would have been fine without replacing them, but I really don't mess around with that when you over torque my stuff. So little fleece filter, getting back to the oil change here. It's probably gonna be an hour long oil change with me running my mouth, but little oil filter, let's go ahead and check that. Let's go ahead and put on our new one. Uh, this uh, stem basically has three O-rings on it with the cover. So it's got a little spiral system in here. So I assume that the oil pressure pushes the oil up through the stem and then spirals out through the fleece filter, which is kind of cool, cool design. But uh, try to wipe everything out as good as I can. Get all that old oil out. And there's a little bit of oil still in my, in my bowl down here. I just take a, uh, a little pick, a little dental pick, and uh, pry my O-rings out. So I'll just take my O-rings off here. One, two, and three. Now, is it uh, really necessary to change these O-rings every single time you do the oil change? No, not really. Um, they're not really under tons of pressure. Uh, you can imagine that, you know, oil pressure runs anywhere from 40 to 40 to 80 uh, PSI, so it's not like these these are under tons of uh, wear and tear, or that you remove them very much at all. Pretty much just slide it in, and the next time it moves, you you've taken it out. So they don't get a lot of wear and tear. Um, I do buy uh, genuine Mercedes everything, so that uh, when it comes down to warranty and all that stuff, they can't say well. You didn't use, you know, you outsourced or you bought it from Auto House or whatever. I don't play that game. Uh, just because the car is still under warranty, uh, this this was certified pre-owned, so it came with an unlimited mile warranty, six years. Um, I've already put 50,000 miles on it in the first year. Um, so I don't play around when it comes to having uh, genuine parts. And they can't say that I didn't buy the parts or didn't do the maintenance because, well, heck, I'm even taking a video of exactly how I do it. And I guarantee you that I put a lot more time and energy into being, uh, being as precise as possible than the techs do at the shop. I guarantee it. Um, they can say what they want. They're certified techs, blah, 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 blah. Um, the certified techs actually uh, screw things up more than, more than uh, regular people do or anal hobbyist like me. Um, I use Super Lube Synthetic Grease to, uh, to grease my O-rings. I just put a little dab on there and then grease the entire O-ring, work it in. So, I mean, it's probably safe to say that the techs wouldn't even replace the O-rings. They just stack up the little baggies full of new O-rings and just send you on your way because nobody's really going to check it. Um, and that's what happens a lot of times. So they over torqued my lug nuts. Uh, on that time on that wheel, uh, I threw a fit about that. It had me really fired up. It's like just that's just BS. Um, another time, um, I took it in for another check engine light. For uh, the second time was a little crankcase ventilation uh, tube that is apparently on the side of the engine. I was going to tear it down and replace it myself, but since it was under warranty and they weren't going to charge me anything, I just decided to take it to the dealership. Um, after, after that experience, I wish I would have just done it myself and sucked it up and just done the work. Um, they say the techs uh, take like four hours to do it, and I'm like, eh, I probably could have done it in two hours with all the stuff you have to take apart. So that time I found 
that they had left um, th this entire plastic uh, system that goes over a lot of the other components like the battery and the power steering fluid and the brake, uh, brake master cylinder and all that. That was all loose. They had just sat it, sat it on top of there and it was rattling around and I could hear it in the wind underneath, underneath the hood while I was driving home. Then I got on it a little bit, uh, had to get on the highway, absolutely no power. The car fell on its face. Um, and then I realized that I had a boost leak and so I pulled over and this, uh, this upper intercooler hose here was completely, uh, it was on there, but they didn't tighten it down. Um, didn't even try. They, the, the, actually the clamps were back uh, um, off of the, off of the uh, hose where they were supposed to be. So they didn't even tighten down my intercooler hose. I'm like, come on, man. Yeah, I found a coolant cap over here, uh, a, a bottle to, or a, a cap to a bottle over here. Um, I put it, uh, put the jacks underneath it, and these fools didn't even put on the shield on the bottom. They still had all the bolts loose. So luckily, I didn't lose any of the bolts that I, uh, those little eight millimeter bolts on the underside. So it's just like, heck, I take it in for service, and these guys don't even finish it. So. They obviously took it for a test drive because my miles were higher when I left. But it's like you guys didn't even try to put this stuff back together. It's like, who was running the shop back there? It's crazy. Okay. So, new filter, new O-rings, all, uh, all lubed up with Super Lube Synthetic Grease. I wiped out the, the cup down here, probably more than anybody would ever do at this dealership. So we're going to go ahead and tighten that down, and then we're going to torque it to 25 newton meters. So we'll go ahead and get this thing snugged down. Alright, snug it down, loosen it back up a little bit. Alright, now let's torque this bad boy to 25 newton meters. So the torque wrench that I always use, uh, this is a snap-on tech angle torque wrench. Um, I did a review on this torque wrench. Um, if you want to check it out, I'll put a link right up here in the video so you can click over to see that video. I go through the down and dirty on this torque wrench and what it's all about. So I got to keep it still for it to zero. And then we're going to set it to 25 newton meters. down. Right. Come on. We're at 25 newton meters. Okay. And then we'll back it off here. And then five newton meters again. Alright. 25.4 newton meters. Torqued. Okay. And turn that off. Okay, so um, after that's said and done, all right, at this point, it's pretty much safe to say that my oil pan is done, is done uh, dra uh, draining. Go ahead and pull the dipstick, wipe it off here so we can start fresh. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. Let's put my super lube away. New crush ring for the drain plug. We'll go ahead and put that on. The drain plug gets tightened to 30 newton meters. So uh, I'm gonna go underneath the car and tighten it to 30 newton meters. Um, so I'll probably cut frames so you don't have to see my legs sticking out from underneath the car. It's like, what is he doing? It's still draining quite a bit. What I'm gonna do is jack up the car on the right, uh, the right hand side, passenger, su passenger side. So we can get all that oil out of the oil pan. All right. Sure. Thought I saw something in my tire. Oh goodness. All right. Oh, now we steady slow or steady flow again. So just jacked up the right side of the car to get the rest of the oil out of the oil pan. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and. 
uh, wipe up the rest of this, wipe up some of this oil residue on my components here where I had greasy fingers. Once again, go the extra mile, keep things nice, wipe down all this stuff while my uh, oil pan is uh, drying out. Okay, so uh, I don't know if I finished that story about the dealership, but uh, intercooler hose was off. I had to tighten that down. Uh, panel on the bottom side was down or uh, was loose. I had tons of scratches all over this uh, uh, driver's side fender. I can even st still see some of them. I was unable to polish it out. Um, I took the paint down quite a bit trying to get them out. And the tech like didn't even, I mean, he was all over my fender, man. And they don't, they don't care about your car. And they probably just like, ah, whatever. It's a C-class, but dude, I'm trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it nice. I'm trying to keep it perfect. Um, that's one thing that's important to me. Like whether you own a Honda Civic or you own a Maybach or a Bentley, like, it should be above reproach on the maintenance that's done on it. Like, take pride in your freaking job. Um, they didn't even put, like, I, I uh, make, it a, make it a point to stay off of the front of the car. Like, I don't, I sometimes I put towels down just to, if I was actually working on the car, I put towels down, a fender cover, um, my magnetic fender cover and stuff like that. But... But dang, have some pride about your job and do things the right way so that, you know, you keep people's stuff nice and keep coming back. And, you know, when I bought the car, like, they were, they preached that Mercedes-Benz was a culture and, and that the, the uh, service was white glove and all this stuff. It's like, dude, it, I've, had, I've had better service at a Jeep dealership. Like, get out of here. It's crazy. All right. So, I, uh... I use the Mobile One Formula M 5W40 from, from the dealership. Um, they give you the choice of what weight you want to run, but um, it usually just use the Mobile One. Uh, this is a little crazy. So some, some, people, uh, some people will probably be like, what in the heck? He's pouring new oil on the ground. But um, what I do to flush out the, the uh, oil pan a little bit is what I will take the new oil and I'll pour a little bit down through the motor and flush out some of that crap in the bottom of the oil pan. So when you dump out a, say, let's say you're, you've got dirt and crap in a five gallon bucket and you dump it out, well there's still a line of dirt in the bottom of the five gallon bucket and you don't have, you have to spray it back out. Maybe if you, if you spray water in the bucket and swash around a little bit and then dump it out again, there's still a trail of dirt. So my theory is when when you're draining the oil and you have the car tilted up so it's draining out of the oil pan, you put a little fresh oil through it. Sometimes um, on my other vehicles, what I'll use is just a uh, just a super tech or something like that from Walmart. Just get a quart of it, and I will literally pour half a quart through the motor and clean it out. Just clean out the bottom of that oil pan because if there's any uh, metal shavings or stuff like that, um, they can they can be flushed out through the bottom of the oil pan. Um, and that's just something I've always done. Uh, just flushed out a little bit. Um, I'll mark the bottle and say this is for flush oil only. So that's really anal when you talk about the grand scheme of things. That's really anal when you're talking about oil change um, or pouring brand new oil right out into the oil pan. Um, really doesn't bother me because this thing doesn't take a full seven quarts. Um, it takes like 6.75 or six, they'll tell you 6.9, but I, I always come out with um, excess oil at the end, so they, they get another bottle out of you. Uh, once you once you run it through the, through the fleece filter and uh, check it again, it barely drops, uh, filling, this, filling the little reservoir for the oil filter back up, so whatever. Let's pop this bad boy back on. Pop my little air intake back on here. Pretty simple in the in the uh, engine bay here. Let's go ahead and take a pair of pliers. Turn my little half turn key. Looks good. Let's wipe down the bottom side of this if I need to. Yeah, it looks like it's a wipe off some of the dust. So every time I, I wash my car, uh, I'll, I will uh, 
wipe out underneath all of my covers just because it keeps everything nice and clean. Um, some, of the, some of this padding gets dirty from time to time. You get dust in it. It's like if you stay ahead of it, your car will never really get that dirty. So I know some people will never, never do this, but it's whatever. If this isn't you, then no big deal. This is how I do it, how I keep my stuff clean. So just wipe down all my components and I'll be ready to wipe this down and uh, be nice and clean when I go to put the engine cover back on. And then next time we'll open it up, it won't be, it won't be worse than, uh, than this time. So. All right, I should be done draining the oil out now. Let's go ahead and pop the oil plug back in and let's do this. <clears throat> so, let's go ahead and fill this up with our six and 6.8 quarts of oil. Uh, moral of the story, if you're going to do the, if you're going to do maintenance yourself because you don't trust people, uh, you, you can, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Uh, of course, if Mercedes ever comes after me and says uh, that I didn't change it at regular intervals or I didn't use the proper techniques or I'm not a certified mechanic, well, I'll slap a bunch of documents on them and then, uh, then I'll slap my logbook on them and then all of my detailed receipts and absolutely everything written down, quality assurance checks, um, all torque values verified, um, what techs worked on my car at the dealership, all the specifics of what those torques were, and um, they can eat it. Uh, because I'll, I trust me, I'll do better maintenance than their guys every single time. Um, it's kind of sad that you have to do that. I won't be, uh, I probably will buy my next Mercedes from a, uh, probably a private, private car place like the Toy Barn, something like that where I'm not dealing with the dealership. Because man, they are dishonest and it's insane. Service guys are usually always awesome, but man, those techs in the back, like, I don't know who certified those guys to work on cars. They don't really care about anything. So, we'll pour our seven quarts in here. So yeah, detailed, detailed, detailed. Trust but verify everything when it comes to, comes to other human beings. Um, I'll trust you until you know, I verify you and I find something messed up. Heck, the first time I left the dealership, I found something messed up that they had done, so. Um, and that's another thing, like, if you if you truly want to see exactly what happens with your car when you're at the dealership, well, you can look through the glass at, at, at the maintenance bay and you can wash it and touch your car, but have them not wash it when you go to leave. So tell them you do not want your car washed when you leave for maintenance anything. So I say, I do not want the car washed. It's annotated on the service request multiple times. Well, guess what? Now I can see every single place that the tech touched on the car. I can see how he drug his feet on my, on my door sill and on my side skirt. I can see that he marred up my, marred up my, uh, my fender. I can see where he was, had his hands on the hood and just how much they don't care about your car. It is evident as, as ever is, um, when you don't get the car washed and they don't have the opportunity to uh, cover up what what crappy stuff we've done. It's hilarious. Yeah, you can just, uh, one time I took it in there just a little, I usually take it in super clean. I have all the components uh, really cleaned up nice for them so uh, they don't even have to get dirty washed or uh, uh, they don't even have to get dirty working on the car. They don't even... You know, if they take a wheel off, it's not dirty and dust and brake dust all over it and all that stuff. I, I'm super nice about it and I, I take care of it. But man, when you don't take care of my car, when you see that it's so nice coming in, we are done. We are done doing business together. Um, I won't be buying my AMG GTR from them, that's for sure. All right. That's three. Go ahead and fill this the rest of the way up. And then I'm gonna put the filter back on, and or uh, sorry, not the filter, but the uh, the undercar plastic protector. And then we'll call it a day. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like my content, go ahead and hit subscribe. Uh, 
turn on those notifications. Um, I'd love to have you around. Um, I do stuff like this all the time. Figured, hey, I'm, I'm doing, the, uh, doing the oil change here on the Merc, so I might as well uh, get it on tape and talk a little bit about Steeler ships. And uh, don't give them your money. Just do it yourself. If you're capable, do it yourself. Don't be lazy. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people will say, oh, I don't have time for that, or what's your time worth? Well, at the end of the day, you're paying for a car. You pay a price for a car, and then you take it to somebody to pay them to mess it up. So I, I just don't get it. So they're like, oh yeah, what's your time worth? Your time is worth uh, $40 an hour. It's like, well, this is what I enjoy doing. I was gonna you know, clean up the garage, but I'm gonna do this and then clean up the garage. So yeah, I spend an hour doing a, an oil change. I could do this probably in 20 minutes if I wasn't talking and doing all that crap. Um, I could do fairly fast oil change, probably faster than those guys lollygagging in the shop could, and I do it a lot better. So if you take pride in your equipment and, and uh, the things that you have, then I don't let other people touch it. Trust but verify. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys next video.